walking QO, and unfortunately for the Io, he doesn't even have boots. So, if that wind lace, the tether movement speed, and all that jazz that you would normally have on the Alk, maybe they would have killed him if the Alchemist was actually the first one into that little pathway, so... Unfortunate, they didn't get the kill, first relocate use, nothing really comes from it, but it does allow QO time to secure the money for his Radiance. And now it's really starting to become, you know, Navi... Okay, General just bought his book 3. He has a book 3 at 18 minutes. That's crazy. That is... that's a bad thing for MVP, that's real bad. That means any hero that gets Ward basically is either gonna go out of mana... Why was the Courier there? Yep, lose the Courier as well. Yeah, well, interesting game so far. <laughs> There's yep. a lot of random things happening. But, Dragon Lance, I guess, helping with that. Yeah, a lot of random things happening, but most are seeming to favor the hometown favorites, as Navi has opened up their lead now to 5,000 gold. And, you know, we were just talking, leading up to the draft, about how hard it is to build a gold lead. 5,000 and 18 is really not bad. It's very good, actually. Th th this is the kind of pace that Navi need to keep. They need to keep making sure that they're forcing objectives, getting tier 1 powers, taking successful team fights, and MVP just haven't really had an answer because their team takes a little bit longer to get off the ground. Once things get rolling, sure, their team is very, very strong. Roshan's going to expertly dodge that arrow thrown by Hitchira. But this should be free Rosh, no real contention coming out from MVP. And even though the tower trade is, is okay in the terms of net worth, it's not really the greatest that MVP are going to have to worry about, again, avoiding Navi. They just can't really fight right now. Mass TPs, they want to go. Dindy's going to eat the unstable concoction. And up, oh, there's the dust in the low ground, Dubu, giving them a little bit of vision. Here we go, they're going to come on in. There's going to be a relocate out. That actually sent them down to bottom. It looks like, yeah, they don't want a piece of this. Seneco is going to end up dropping in the midst of it all. But it's a one for one as they've taken down Dubu as well. And the Io is going to be forced back in. So just trying to make sure they protect that Alchemist. As you said, every minute he's down, so impactful. Didn't even try to fight it out. You think that was the right call to just abandon ship? Uh, after seeing how much damage this style took, I mean, maybe. They're going to get a kill here on Femi Ooh. as well after the relocate. There's not much a, a Wisp can do against that, unfortunately. You're just going to explode every single time. But the biggest thing was MP wasn't there, so not having Doom means that if you take the team fight, there's a high risk of the Alchemist dying. Losing that fight maybe gives Navi even more of an advantage than they already have, and they just didn't want to take the risk of the snowball factor, so they just let it go. They're like, okay, we're going to lose you know, maybe one or two heroes, but at the end of the day, we still got QO farming the map. But they, there is kind of a, a point where push comes to shove, and MVP are going to have to make a decision on, okay, we need to take at least one fight. We cannot let Navi just run all over us forever, and I think that's going to start happening when the Tier 2s are under siege. Well, what's bizarre is the difference in net worth is actually heading back in favor of MVP just because they bailed out on that fight. Oh, so yeah. It seems like, I mean, it, they're playing it out. It feels risky, but I think it's a lot less risky than how it feels to us watching at home. I mean, these pros have such an excellent sense of where they stand in their own itemization, their own development. Speaking of, the Doom picked up a Crimson Guard, so exit to go there. And let's see if they want to try to, in general, wants to try to lead the way here as he's under cover of an Empress, but yeah, I'm, I'm curious as to when we're going to see that, that okay, this is the moment kind of a, a go It word. could be now, honestly. There's, well, there's Roar on the Ferev. Ferev just brought down before the fight even really gets going. They're going to come in, there's the Magnetize from Dubu. Good damage being done, but do they actually have it to enough to finish it off? Art Style is next to drop. Now Dendi's going to end up losing the Aegis. General has nothing left in the tank, very little mana, deploys. The Necro book, but it's not going to matter. He's going to be chased down and cut down as MVP bringing a silence to this crowd. Febby will end up being traded away. But if they can find Ditcheron, nope, no dust, no nothing. Big win across the board that time, I think. Even though they lost two for MVP, that's a much bigger win than a two for three would seem to indicate. That fight actually totally changes the complexity of this game. Yep. Or complexion, excuse me. It's one of those times where you think, okay, we've been winning the entire game. We have a huge power spike because our TA has like Desolator. You know, we got Book Three on Beastmaster. We're gonna be, we're gonna be looking pretty good. And then all of a sudden, Doom comes out with a Crimson Guard. The Alchemist you can't really kill anymore because he has at least one item that gives him tankiness. The Mischance coming out from the Radiance also helped a little bit in that team fight. And now all of a sudden, Qo's got a full Manta, and it's 22 minutes in. This is why I was so worried about Navi not really doing enough, right. because this is the type of lineup where if you just sleep on them for too long and they're able to continue farming they're going to get items so much faster than you that you will just be buried in a gold lead. And yep. the, the, the sad part about it is that Navi's laning phase still went extremely well. Oh, like, yeah. Maybe even better than I thought it would, but it still kind of 
leaning towards MVP going into this mid slash late game. So Navi need to figure out how are they going to be able to reestablish their map control because after that MVP are just farming everything. They're like, okay, we're going to farm mid, we're going to farm your woods, bottom lane. <laughs> Having IO means that we can relocate QO to another side of the map and then he can bot back if he wants to. Like the options for MVP going forward are almost endless, whereas Navi kind of are like, all right, we got a Mirana with a Dragonlance and a Manta, which is fine, but that ain't going to kill an Alchemist. Right. Well, it's on whenever you look at their itemization too, like the net worth overall, you've got no surprise QO sitting at the top, and then it's going to be three Navi heroes that follow it up, but each of them have, you know, a fair amount of, like, the general as well as Dimni both have money tied up in a blink dagger, which in theory is really good if you can jump like an IO and blow him off the map, but everyone else is very, very strong. There's the Doom on the Ditchy Raw, and like you said, man, just trying to kill him, such a tough road to hoe. They're going to try to re-engage Ditchy Raw. Will be brought down. Seneco trying to use the Death Ward to his advantage, but it feels like they barely touched MVP. The Magnetize went off. Seneco trying to heal through it, but the rest of Navi just has to run, and Dindy going to be pursued down from behind. There's going to be the unstable concoction. No follow-up, though, even though it did catch him on the high ground. But, yeah, that's a three for nil, my friend, and MVP still has all five standing. Only MP is actually below 90% health. They can't fight. It, it, they literally cannot fight MVP right now. There's too much damage. Like, Dubu having the level two magnetize, you have to worry about Radiance burn. There's Scorched Earth. The TA cannot stand in the fight without BKB. Unless Dendi has magic immunity, he will not be able to kill a single hero before he himself dies. Because there's just so much residual AoE damage that he's taking that eats his refraction right away. And that's not even mentioning Ion Show. A vacuum on the Dendi. He's going to be silenced out. He's gone. Big kill there. He's down for 57 seconds. Does he have buyback? He does have buyback if they want to spend it. Doesn't look like that's a call right now. Sameko sitting at 15 seconds till Death Ward is up. Art style, 50 seconds until he's able to throw his ult. Arrow's going to hit nothing but a creep. QO just running interference at this point. Hanging around behind the tower. Navi trying to force them back out. The Crimson Guard buff will expire. This might be their moment. And there's the cast. But Bebby hooks back up with QO to try to keep him up and fighting. And they're just going to go ahead and use the Greaves through it, going back into the Tier 3. Wouldn't surprise me if they abandoned ship after they just bring down the Tier 3 and just leave the racks for another day. They're going to hit Seneco with a bit of damage, but still no follow. There's a fair amount of damage up. Coming out of There's going to be the Roar. Are they going to go in? Looks like QO is going to get back out in front. The Roar completely wasted that time. Nothing comes of it, and they're going to hang. Dindy's back up in two seconds. They really want to get this melee racks. We'll see if it's going to cost them. Navi should be ready with most of their ultimates <laughs> now. And yeah, never mind. There goes the Lich. He's down. Didn't you raw in general? Oh. Beautiful vacuum wall. They're sent running for the fountain. Magnetized there just for good measure. And MVP, just their, the amount of healing they have, the amount of regen. They are in such good shape and ready to fight. Death Ward's going to be thrown, but no follow. They do manage to bring down a necro creep and that's about it and oh now God. mvp they can't do anything no. navi just don't have damage like it sounds crazy when you have like templar assassin book three beastmaster and you know death ward but they actually do not have the damage to kill mvp like there's ice armor on the doom he's going for more armor on top of the crimson guard he's going to go straight into Ashivas. the alchemist has radiance manta and pretty much the octarine on his on a way out right now which means he's going <laughs> to have almost permanent chemical rage it, the, the timing for MVP is here. Like, it's only 26 minutes in. It doesn't seem yeah. like that long, but when you have these three cores that all farm at accelerated rates, like Darkseer can push waves really fast, Doom has Devour, Alchemist has Freeble Screed, you need to be able to just absolutely smash them for the first 20 minutes of the game to win, or you run into this stage. Yep. So I think that the TA pick is kind of a, a window opportunity. We're going to see... Uh, wait, did they scan that? Yeah, okay. I guess it was a scan. That was weird. But... You have this opportunity in the early part of the game, like 15, 20 minutes in, where you can pressure really hard with Navi's heroes, and then the timing comes for MVP, where they just have way too much health, way too much armor. Like, this Alchemist has 28 armor and 2,400 health. Shiva's out now on the Doom, too. Yeah, th this is it's too much for Navi right now. They, they need a perfect team fight. That is the only way they're going to kill any heroes. I mean, at this point, like... I guess the one thing they have going for them, I mean, they've got a couple of buybacks and, you know, not a lot on MVP. Um, nope, they're just going to go ahead and go right in. They find Art Style. This is not the way you want to get that started. And he's down for the count. No buyback on Art Style. 
And this is one of the biggest weaknesses of Lich. It's being showcased right here. Yep. Is that once the landing phase breaks down, unless you have just gleaned an enormous lead from that beginning state and the rest of your team is kind of carrying you, you don't do anything. So this is kind of why I was thinking before, you know, they're going to see a little bit of a trade here, I guess, from the side of Navi. They're killing the base quite fast. Yeah, trying to make something happen with it. Here comes the relocate in. General gets off the roar on the QO. And now they're going to try to force him back. They're going to catch Ditchy Raw. There's the leak. They did get the Doom off. Dindy's going to be spotted vacuum. Able to keep Dindy planted firm. And QO going to work on him now. And he's just going to stand and burn oh, him down. lane as he's well, the cask. And then mid lane, as you said, the, the battle's still raging. MP doing good damage. They do manage to bring down Febby. So Nako's going to end up being brought down now with Dubu hooking up with MP. General in some trouble as well. QO in the meantime did manage to finish off another kill. He's even picked up a Dagon. Okay. Make it a Dagon 3. Looks okay. like money. Money to burn, my friend. That's the we won Dagon right yep. there. Manor, Manor Dagon. I mean, Navi did everything they could there. They went for the split push. It seemed like it was working out pretty well. And then MVP just teleport back. And Navi are in a state where they simply can't fight. They don't have the items. The, the item progression coming in from QO was way too fast. The Doom went, I think, probably the best possible build for this scenario when you know that you just need to be able to five versus five yep. and make use of the fact that you have this magnetized, the vac wall, this insane amount of damage against supports and a TA without a BKB. You just, you can't deal with it. Well, it looks like the GG push on the way now. Navi will have their three that are down responding just in time for one last Hurrah, and uh, Dichirah does manage to add a damage item, or at least a attack speed and damage item to his inventory. BKB coming out late, but coming at least out at all for Dindy now. And you have to wonder if he just skipped Blink and gone straight to BKB, could this be a different story? There's going to be the vacuum, Dichirah forced the leap, just cleaning things out. There's going to be the chain frost, Shivas will be deployed, there's going to be a good death ward, however the relocate is there. And now QO taking a fair amount of damage. They actually can bring him down. So it's a one for one. And Navi for the moment able to hold serve. As they're going to try to pursue out MVP. They're able to back oh, up and get back no. on the same page. But now here's going to be coming the Alchemist straight back down mid lane. Dindy's overextended. Out by himself. No team there to help. And they bring him down with the help of 4M's vacuum. And Navi looked like they were showing signs of life. Turns out to be just a death rattle. As the Alchemist now hooked back up, QO, phenomenal game for him. Dagon 3 helps out, I guess, for Sieging High Ground. I think this is going to be that, though. Uh, potentially, you know, 40 seconds left on the TA. They could call GG here. I'm not sure, though, because they have a Tier 2 in the top lane. But, you know, if QO maybe didn't buy a Dagon 3, he might have had enough health to live through that. Who knows? But <laughs> I I'm sure it's fine. He even Mantas just to grief MP a little bit, make sure he gets hit by that arrow. <laughs> All things considered, I really love the MVP's draft. Like, from the get-go, it's a really creative way of just directly dealing with the Lich. And it's also fantastic because the Earth Spirit makes TA such a hard hero to play in fights. Like, you, you want to pick TA because it's a really high physical damage burst hero. And on paper, it's really great against what MVP were picking. And then you remember that Earth Spirit has Magnetize. And there's an Ion Shell on the other team. And Darkseer was a last pick because the off lane for MVP was just completely ignored. They safe lane the Doom. So I kind of feel like Na'Vi might have been a little tricked by the Doom pick early and assuming that it was going to be somewhere else. And they picked supports that weren't as good at dealing with Horeb in the offlane. And he was able to get still a huge chunk of farm. So right. really big credit to MVP for their draft this game. It's probably one of the more creative things that we've seen so far here at WePlay. And it's just worked phenomenally. Well, this Roshan should just about be the final nail in the coffin for MVP. As you said, creative draft well executed. And let's look ahead while we can. I mean, you, you don't, you don't want to count the team out too far, but, I mean, two sets of racks down given the massive gap in experience and gold. I, I'm looking at the second game. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. <laughs> this game is, this game is I gotta really i got to be hard. careful. If you say it's time to look at the second game, that means I'm allowed to look at the second game. So, bouncing back from this, I mean, does Navi maybe learn from this? There's going to be another kill that will be them finding Bebby that time. And now General, though, caught out, silenced out. Shiva's coming in, not a worthwhile trade at all. Yeah, but they, they just knew they had to try something. You yeah, know? why wouldn't If you? you're going to go back on the, the road to recovery in this game, you need to be out on the map. You can't just sit in your base. Because for the same reasons we mentioned, if MVP have a game where both teams are just sitting around farming, MVP are always getting ahead. So Navi knew that they needed to be the aggressors there. And a risk is a risk, but it's a necessary one. QO using Dagon on the creep. 
Because the hell with that creek. He needs that gold, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like they're going to go to work on the tier two. Navi not even going to try to contest it as expected. Okay, question I asked kind of in the middle of the fight there. Do you think it makes any difference at all if Dindy skips the blink dagger and maybe has his BKB out? Just oh, absolutely it does. Yeah. The, the thing is, when you buy blink, you need to make sure that you don't need the BKB for your high ground defense. And I think that's kind of the mistake that he made, yeah. just assuming that they would have more time. Because you buy blink when you want to be active and you want to be able to get in somebody's face. Art style getting too cute. Too close to the fire. And he will get off the chain cross, though, before he drops. That's going to be it. Arrow's going to split the wickets. Doesn't find a target. General roars at QO. Here comes Dendi. Four staff, though. Gets the Alchemist back to safety. And they're going to go ahead and chase him down. BKB now being shown by Dendi. They're going to try to kite this out a little bit. MP throughout the Doom. And Dendi can do nothing but fall back along with the rest of his team. Death Ward's on point. The damage just not enough. Seneco able to get a fair amount of damage done overall. But his team falling amidst this swarm. I mean, Jesus, the damage coming out of Ditcher Raw is not to be trifled with, though. As he's able to bring them down very low. They're going to have to fall back in region at the very least. Here comes Dubo getting a little too brave, maybe. And all five still standing for MVP, They're though. All they got, so low. I was going to say, if they got one full health bar between them, I'd be shocked. General, though, not quite as fortunate to have any kind of a health bar. He sent packing. And the glyph finally deployed. Buyback status is nil for their main damage dealer in Dindy, so. He won't be back up for 25 more seconds. And, but just look at this, man. They had no health. Now look at QO. Now look at the rest of them. Another good vacuum wall caught, too. Art style has to make a run for it. And, yeah, finally tracked down. Buyback from Tichira. He'll try to shoo them away as best he can, but I don't think it's going to matter. Everyone's just so damn tanky. And Tichira overall had a pretty good game. But as he expires, Dindy's coming back up. He's down for not, not, not going to matter. GG. Yeah, it was a really nice game from MVP. Navi did everything they could, I think. It just comes to a certain point where you have to work